Hello, and welcome to the first new weekly episode of NCIA Today. That's right. We're coming at you now every week on Fridays with updates on what's happening in the industry and here at NCIA. I'm your host, Bethany Moore, NCIA's Deputy Director of Communications. This week, we're catching up on all the action that went down this last month, including Senate confirmation hearings and how those could impact cannabis policy reform down the road. But first, I want to highlight some of the great content on our website that we urge you to check out if you haven't already. In fact, I'm going to do this every week for you so you don't miss a thing. On our blog, be sure to read up on what's new in New Jersey since Governor Murphy signed legislation allowing adult use cannabis into the Garden State. It's a bit complicated, so check out the blog by Genova Burns on our website titled It's still snowing, but is Jersey's grass finally green? I don't know about you, but I'm done with snow and ready for spring in more ways than one. Also on NCIA's Industry Insights blog, check out the advice from Thrive Pop about how to work with social media influencers to market your brand. Plus, for California dispensaries navigating their retail sales tax, NCIA member Red Eye CPAs offers advice on some of the nuances you need to know about. All right, so in addition to all that fresh content on our website, let's check in with our government relations offices in Washington, D.C. Hi, Michelle. Last time we checked in with your team in early February, Michael Correa was about to go sledding in the snow with his daughter, but I'm happy to report that the sun is back out here in Denver. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Same here. I think we're getting a little closer to spring and and certainly hope we're closer to, I don't know, some things like outdoor dining and maybe a vaccine. So keeping our fingers crossed. Absolutely. Yeah, we're doing good here in Colorado. I think we're code blue or something. So we'll see how it goes. Great. Well, since we're bringing the NCIA Today update to our audiences weekly now, it's a great opportunity to hear what's new and important around the Beltway. Like recently, Senate confirmation hearings have been taking place. What have we learned so far about them and how it might impact cannabis policy reform ahead? Yeah, Bethany. Well, cannabis has come up during a number of Senate confirmation hearings in the last couple of weeks. I'm sure most people have been, you know, primarily focused maybe on the Department of Justice and the nominee there, Merrick Garland, and, uh, you know, what could be possible uh, as far as that. And cannabis did come up during his confirmation hearing. He was asked about it from Senator Booker from New Jersey, amazing champion for our industry, as well as freshman Senator John Ossoff. You'll remember he was just newly elected in uh, one of those special Georgia races. And so we're really, really glad to see him be active on this issue. And, you know, Mr. Garland, or I should say Judge Garland, really hammered home, um, you know, that there are a lot of racial disparities in enforcement. And so we were really glad to see that he seems to understand that issue. And, you know, we're hopeful that we can work with his Department of Justice once he's confirmed to to see what we can do for the cannabis industry. And, you know, if we're going to have something like a Garland memo. But beyond him, cannabis also came up in a couple other confirmation hearings as well. It came up during a Senate Finance Committee confirmation hearing for the Deputy Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, his name is Mr. Adeyamo. And uh, one of our, our dear friends, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto out of Nevada, asked him a question about cannabis banking. And he committed to reviewing the, the topic when, uh, you know, it's confirmed and said he looks forward to maybe working with her and some of her colleagues on that. So I was very excited and jumped up when I heard that. But, so, you know, I've been home for too long when you're jumping for joy when, when cannabis banking comes up at a confirmation hearing. But and there was still one more over in the House, or excuse me, not the House, the Senate. Small Business Committee, um, Ms. Guzman, who is the nominee for uh, to be the administrator over at the Small Business Administration, was also asked about cannabis from Senator Jackie Rosen, also from Nevada, and she committed to uh, becoming familiar with this issue and, you know, stated that she wants to help all small businesses. And so that was really reassuring. So definitely a lot of action, really exciting. And if people are interested in reading more about what was specifically asked, they can also go to our website, thecannabisindustry.org, and check out a blog that I wrote that has all the all the great details in there. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Well, it's uh, really optimistic to hear these new freshman members of Congress jumping right into our issues, too. It's amazing. Yeah. 
Also, yeah. uh, we saw movement in three states very recently. Well, two states in a district. Uh, Virginia voted to legalize cannabis for adults over 21, which will make Virginia an adult use cannabis state. And New Mexico is working their adult use cannabis bill through the state legislature. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And the Virginia one is near and dear to my heart. I, I, was, I grew up in Virginia and my parents still live there. So I'm really, really excited to see um, reform in my home state. But they really left it until the 11th hour. I mean, I think they were literally in like the last day of an extended session uh, to get this over the finish line. They had a, a lot of differences between the House and Senate bill and had to go to a conference committee to iron out some of those differences. But they ended up getting it across the line. Of course, this is notable because there's only been a couple of states that have passed adult use cannabis legalization through the legislature. And Virginia is going to become the first state in the South to do this as well. And so um, they're expecting sales in 2024. They have to revisit some provisions in a couple of years, but um, we're excited to see things are on track there, hopefully, and, and for them to get the ball rolling. And then, like you mentioned, in New Mexico, there is a bill that has cleared the uh, House there, and now it is being debated in the Senate. But I think that their session is only in for maybe two more weeks or so. And so they have um, you know, definitely they're on a deadline to, to get things done. But New Mexico has really been trying for years now to get this over the finish line. And so hopefully they can do it this session. I know the bill that they've passed, they've considered a number of cannabis bills, but the one that's passed out of the House really focuses on equity. And I think that that's just a really important thing to mention that, you know, they had all these bills to choose from and they're choosing to do it right. And so we're excited to see what's next for New Mexico. Definitely keeping our, our fingers crossed there. I was going to say, crossing my fingers, definitely. So positive Lots momentum, <laughs> very positive momentum in both of those cases. So, but how about right there in DC, which is a bit more complicated, if I recall. Yes. So you're coming, I'm coming to you straight live from my living room here in Washington, DC. <laughs> and you guys will remember DC actually voted through Initiative 71 back in 2014 to, uh, to legalize adult use cannabis. But because we are a district, we're not a state, we are beholden to Congress and uh, we get to be used as their little test case for whatever they want, whether that's cannabis or historically things like abortion, the death penalty, whatever. And so there's been a rider um, in place. It's known as the Harris Rider. That guy's name sounds familiar. It's probably because you heard that he tried to bring a gun onto the House floor after the insurrection in January. So not our favorite dude. Um, but but Andy Harris from Maryland has put a rider in place every year. Um, that has said that DC can't implement its own will that we cannot tax, tax and regulate um, adult use cannabis here. And so now that Democrats control both houses, we are optimistic and so is DC city government optimistic that we can get that rider lifted. And so, um, you know, before they do that, though, the city council and the mayor have both already proposed their versions of what uh, marijuana legalization should look like. So um, exciting here in D.C., you know, those bills have a number of differences. And so now, of course, they're going to go through that process. But again, all contingent on uh, on what happens in the appropriations process. So that's certainly something that that we'll be focusing on heavily as we turn into spring and what we call appropriation season. Appropriation season, indeed. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for that update, Michelle. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, DC is definitely a unique place with their taxation without representation. Fun. I know it, it says it right on our license plates too. You think they'd get it, but there's 700,000 um, residents here in the district, and we pay our taxes, and we have no representation in the halls of Congress. We have a delegate, but she doesn't even get a vote. So. Um, really harkens back to your memory to learning about that in American history, like you alluded to. So um, certainly that's also something Congress is taking up. You know, there's a lot of issues on the on the table. Obviously, we're really focused on marijuana. But here in D.C., there's a lot of things going on. COVID packages, you know, uh, voting rights, D.C. statehood, climate change. Um, you know, Congress has no shortage of issues they're going to be talking about. But we're doing everything we can to make sure cannabis stays part of the conversation. Awesome. Thanks for all your hard work in DC, you and the team stay safe and we'll see you next time and see what's happening in DC. Next time we check in with you. Thanks so much, Bethany. Nice to see you as always. Thank you, Michelle. Have a good one. Bye. All right. Don't forget to head to our website to check out our interactive congressional scorecard where you can see where members of Congress in each state stand on key cannabis reform issues like the safe banking act. 
We recently announced the publication of our newest report on gender parity in the cannabis industry, which we co-authored with the ArcView Group. The report, which is a series of papers on specific issues diving deep into gender parity. It also includes helpful toolkits to help you put these practices into your own company. I also got a chance to record a series of podcasts with various authors of the paper, so you can hear right from the authors in this month's series of podcasts. Head to NCIA's website and download the reports. Before we wrap up this episode, here's a few reminders. While we're still being careful and socially distancing for a little while longer, we highly anticipate getting back to safely hosting our national and regional events in person later in 2021. Stay tuned for some important announcements coming next week. Keep hanging in there with us while we head toward that light at the end of the tunnel of the coronavirus pandemic. Which brings me to our new app, NCIA Mobile, which you can download to your phone now in Google Play and the App Store to make sure you're subscribed to our email list, staying connected, and listening to our podcasts. NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice, hosted by yours truly, has been running for over four years now, and you can listen on our website or on other platforms like Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and more. And now's a great time to invest in the future of our industry by getting more involved in NCIA, registering for our educational webinars, learning more about the diversity, equity, and inclusion program sponsorship opportunities as well. Join NCIA members who have stepped up their support by becoming DEI program sponsors like Tahoe Wellness Center and Copper State Farms. In the meantime, our full-time government relations team in DC is pressing on with cannabis policy reform efforts in Congress, ending federal marijuana prohibition and opening opportunities for the legal industry. NCIA's weekly webinar series keeps you connected with the industry, up to date on best practices and regulatory issues. Plus our fireside chats are an exclusive benefit just for NCIA members, all included in your membership. Now's a great time to make sure you're following us on social media channels like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and check out all the great content we're sharing with you. If you're a member of NCIA, log into your new member benefit, NCIA Connect, and spark up a conversation with your fellow NCIA members and colleagues today. We'll see you next week.